This is one of my favorite examples in the PFIC regulations because it explains a tricky concept that a lot of people initially misunderstand. The example deals with A, a non-resident alien, who purchased marketable stock of Corp FX, which was a PFIC, in 1995 for $50. At the time of this purchase, A was not a U.S. person and had nothing to do with the U.S. Ten years later, in 2005, A becomes a U.S. person and makes a timely Section 1296 election for 2005, the first year of his U.S. tax residency. The fair market value of the stock at the beginning of 2005 is $100. The fair market value of the FX stock at the end of 2005 is $110. A computes the amount of mark-to-market gain or loss for the FX stock in 2005 by reference to an adjusted basis of 100, and therefore A includes 10 in gross income as mark-to-market gain. Additionally, A's adjusted basis in the FX stock for mark-to-market election purposes is increased to $110. Importantly, however, for all other tax purposes, A's basis in the FX stock starts at 50 from the purchase back in 1995 and increases to 60 from the 10 mark-to-market inclusion. In 2006, A sells the shares of FX for $120. For purposes of applying the normal gain or loss rules under Section 1001, A must use the basis of 60, the original 50 plus the 10 of mark-to-market gain. Therefore, A recognizes a gain of $60. 10 of the gain is treated as ordinary income under the mark-to-market rules. The remaining 50 of gain is long-term capital gain because A held the stock for more than one year.